What's up everybody? It is Say New with another rambling review. Today I'm going to talk about the NBC production Good Girls. As I said before, I'm going to be focusing on women focused films and TV shows for Women's History Month. And I did decide to finally watch this TV show um, simply because it's been in my watch list for some time now and I thought why not and I did know that the new season was premiering soon. I just binged the first three seasons and I have a lot to say. My overall rating for this series is probably um I don't think there were any parts that were super terrible or any parts that were plus level but I think it's a really good series. I don't think it's a concept that's done multiple times over and over again. You do see it in some things like Mad Money or Set It Off, where there's a concept, or you know, even like Robin Hood, there's a concept of, you know, kind of stealing money, good versus bad, and so forth. I still feel like this TV show managed to play off of a theme that's familiar but not overused and still make it their own. You definitely get connected with each of the main characters and their stories. The people who are villains, you still get invested with them and you wanna know more. So I think that the series writing is, is pretty well. The plot of this series focuses on three main ladies, Beth Bolin, Annie Marks, and Ruby Hill. They are three ladies who are best friends, they're all mothers, and they're at different ages and places in their lives. Beth Bolin is kind of a homemaker, a caretaker. Her life is typical suburban mom, whereas Annie Marks, she was someone who got pregnant at a young age in high school and is struggling as an adult who never finished high school. Ruby Hill is married and has two kids. One of her children, Sarah, is very sick and um, they kind of focus on what that life is like being a parent of a child who's very sick and also parents who are struggling financially. So these three ladies decide that they are going to do a one and done, rob a grocery store, get what they desperately need. And this idea for robbing a grocery store is the catalyst for the rest of the series, how they get mixed up in a lot of unfortunate events. With season one and two, I was very, very dedicated to the series. I binged it probably within a day, maybe two at the most. The first two seasons focused on the ladies being kind of a deer in headlights to the criminal world. They were very innocent and um, kind of learning the ropes with how to deal with drug dealers, how to deal with laundering money and washing money and so forth and showing their innocence and juxtaposition to the people that they were dealing with. It was very interesting and intriguing. You see in the first season uh, some type of flirtationship between Beth and Rio and that was very engaging and you see how strong Ruby's relationship was with her husband and how strong Annie's relationship is with her child. And those are relationships that play a key part in the rest of the series. For me, the third season, I was not as into it as I was with the first two seasons. It was kind of a 360 with the way that it was written and the way that the characters were developing compared to the first two seasons. And I couldn't quite put my finger on why I wasn't as interested in the third season. It took me a little longer to watch that maybe four days versus watching two whole seasons in a couple of days. And I felt like it was because I wasn't ready for the evolution that the characters were going through and the evolution that the series was going through. This happens with every series where you have a certain formula and at some point they do decide to change up things and it's either a slow evolution or it's a drastic one. And this one was a drastic one. It went from them being kind of doe in headlights and kind of getting a little more bolder in the second season with their criminal activity to third season. Now we're focusing on highlighting how dangerous what they're doing is. The first two seasons was very light and, oh, we could get caught by the cops, but we're smarter than the cops. And it was very playful. It didn't seem as dangerous, but the third season kind of focused more on why you shouldn't be laundering money, why you shouldn't be dealing with drug dealers. It kind of got real. Whereas the first two seasons made it seem like, oh, this is something that anybody could do. I would never. But it made it seem a lot lighter. And the third season was a lot darker. And I think that was what was troubling for me was just having that change of mind, that change of pace 
was a little difficult. Once I figured out that's what I was seeing on screen with the third season, I then got as invested with it as I was with the first two seasons. I just had to accept the fact that, you know, this isn't some simple thing. Just like the girls thought it was gonna be a simple thing, they were just gonna make some money. So I think that the whole series, the three seasons that have come out so far, have been great, the writing has been great, and I think the actors are great. I was first introduced to the actress for Beth Bolin, Christina Hendricks. I was first introduced to her acting through Mad Men. I do love that series, but we will of course talk about that on another rambling review. Christina was first introduced into the entertainment world through modeling and she modeled internationally for some years before trying her hand in acting. She can be seen in Happen Leonard, the Neon Demon, The Strangers Pray at Night, and Ten Star. I think her work as Beth Bolin is great. I think that she portrays the role really well and I don't think of her other works that she's been in when I see her as Beth. I remember her, but I don't think, oh, it's hard to get her into this role. She acts really well and so do her counterparts. You have Mae Whitman. One of the most notable works for her would be her role in The Duff and that's because it was one of her first like major leading roles but she has played in a lot of other things as well. You can see her in When a Man Loves a Woman, One Fine Day, Independence Day, Hope Floats, Jag and she has also done some voice acting work as well. Our third main lady, Rita, she is best known for her comedic work. She is a stand-up comedian. Now, I was not familiar with that before watching this series. I went to try to find out more about her to see if she's been in anything else that I've seen. I was at some point thinking that she was a little bit too much used as the comedic relief. Um, I will talk in another review about why it can be detrimental to depend on a black person for comedic relief all the time but um over the overall it does make sense since she is a comedian why she is looked to for some comedic relief but also Mae Whitman fills out a lot of that comedy as well so it's not just all targeted to one person which is good. Rita can be seen on Comedy Central's Premium Blend and she is also featured on NBC's Parks and Recreation. Of course, there are multiple other people in the series that do have notable work, but I wanted to focus on the main three ladies. Of course, there is the heartthrob. I'm, he's not my type, but there is the heartthrob, Manny Montana, and he plays Rio. I'm not as familiar with his work. Um, I don't think I've seen anything with him outside of Good Girls, but I did look into him a little bit and I know he was uh, featured in Graceland. One of the main people that of course we could probably give a shout out to is Matthew Lillard. He plays the iconic role for Shaggy and I think we all love him in that role, but I think he does really good in being a serious nurturing husband, um, nurturing at times and <laughs> to different people. I don't know his work as much. I do know that he's been in a lot of films and I know he is a great actor. I just haven't seen all of the things that he's been in. I have had no trouble watching him as Dean Bolin in this TV series because he plays the role so well. He is very convincing as Beth's husband and in their relationship, his own storyline as well, the things that he's dealing with that cause him to do the things that he does. I know I look a little different. It's a different time of day, but I did need to add this in here. I was editing this video and I did forget something very important that I wanted to talk about, which is the writer's and director's decision on what to do with the character of Ben Marks, also known as Sadie Marks. We have seen some transgender characters in other shows. We've seen transgender characters in The Fosters. We've seen them recently in Supergirl. But the way that they wrote this was a little different. They didn't draw so much attention on the fact that the character is transgender. More so, they, they drew upon the relationship between Annie and Ben. And I think that was great. There was no skipping a beat when Sadie came out as Ben. They had a very intimate bonding moment. Um, and I think that was nice because it just flowed. Everything was still normal. And I think that's good to have storylines for transgender people where being transgender isn't their whole identity. They have so much else going on for them in their lives. And I think that it was smart the way that they decided to develop 
Ben's character. They were not originally writing the character as transgender. They found out, I think maybe the first day of on being on set or right after accepting him in the role, they found out that he is transgender. And so I think they worked that in. They worked in what he was going through in his personal life into the script and it it worked beautifully. It was very good on the writers and the director to seamlessly put that into the script and to make it such a beautiful moment that really is unlike other roles that I've seen transgender people have. A con for the series would definitely be that I feel like the girls put themselves in these situations. Um, you would think they'd be smarter by now as many times as their lives have been threatened, their family's lives have been threatened, and they're just not smart. <laughs> you would think that they were smart, but they're not. And I'm not quite sure what, what it is with Rio either, why he decides to keep going back to them when they continue to risk his business. His business was never at risk before he met the girls, but he keeps going back into business with them to then keep continue being pressed up in situations where he's gonna get exposed to the cops, where he's gonna be having people not meet his deliveries on time. I mean, it's the same thing. It, it's like a cycle that of course you know has to happen, for the series to continue, but it literally makes no sense. Like if, if people were doing this in real life, I would hope that they would be smarter than this. They would learn from previous lessons and not be doing the same things. If I was Rigo and I was a business owner, I wouldn't be investing in people who have continued to compromise my business. If I was somebody who had to run from the cops like Beth and Ruby and Annie, I would not continue doing things that are gonna make me have to run from the cops. It just, it it's a cycle that when you, since this series is supposed to be focused in reality, it's not a fantasy series, where is the reality? Where is the intelligence? Sometimes it's just thrown out the window, all for a script. And that can get frustrating at times. That can get frustrating at times for sure, because it just feels like they should have evolved a little bit more. And sometimes when they redo these storylines, like getting back mixed back up in criminal activity, it feels like they're the same girls from season one. So that's a pretty big con. As far as the relationship between Rio and Beth, I will be talking about that a little bit on Instagram. I do have a series coming out called Drama Comma. Essentially, I'll be talking about the drama. I'll be like a regular viewer who's just gushing about the little details. I'll talk more about things like that on Drama Comma, whereas here on Rambling Reviews, I'll be talking more about the film aspect, way that everything was put together, the cinematography, the film score, things like that. As I said, Good Girls is a series that premieres on NBC. Um, it's not it's not surprising that the series ended up on NBC. They typically have more comedic things on their um, network. Good Girls has a 7.8 out of 10 on IMDb. It has an 87% on Rotten Tomatoes and on TV.com it has a 7.7 .7 out of 10. And that's not too bad. Um, I, I do think I could get with where those scores are. It's not like a top notch, top of the line production. And there are times that it does fall flat. Like with the cons that I was talking about, and of course, usually with series, as they go on, they kind of drop in ratings, they kind of drop in their quality. Whereas usually the pilot season and maybe the second or third season are hard hitting and from there it kind of just whew. So my recommendation would be for people to definitely go check out Good Girls. I do think that it has good comedy, it has great drama. It has a good combination of everything. It has a little bit of love interest and it talks about real life things as well as dramatizing some real life things. I don't have anything particular to say about film score or the way that it was filmed. It's pretty typical the way that scenes are set up and the music is pretty typical with any other television show. They usually have slower, more indie songs and the more serious scenes and they might have something more upbeat if they're trying to make light of a situation or if it actually is a light situation. Nothing super creative in those areas. Pretty much this is an average TV series. The script I do think is good. It's not something that's totally original, but it's original enough that I think this series can get an A. The acting jobs in this series boost up the score for me because I do think that they have great 
casting in this series. Thanks so much for sitting with Stay New and listening to another rambling review.